pulling out of Klamath Falls. Amtrak's Coast Starlight heads north. We'll cross the Cascade Mountains and see the Willamette Valley and the Columbia River before ending the day in Seattle. Volunteers from the Klamath Falls Visitor Center provide information as the Coast Starlight hugs the shore of Upper Klamath Lake. On our left is over 60,000 acres. It's the largest freshwater lake in Oregon and one of the largest in the United States. It's about 25 miles long and ranges in width from 2.5 to 12.5 miles. The shoreline is 98 miles in length. Klamath Falls is on the migration route, uh, Pacific migration route, so we have a lot of birds going through here. The entire perimeter of Klamath Lake is wildlife refuge. We call this the Klamath Basin. And in any way you want to leave town, you have to go over a mountain. So come winter, we're so glad to have Amtrak. Is Brown coming over with the white foam? The last call, Root Beer Fall. Last month it was frozen. Last month it was frozen when we came through here. Speaking of frozen, the higher we went, the more snow we saw. Here we're near Odell Lake, making a steady climb to Willamette Pass. If you're into railroad engineering, hang on to your heart. You'll love this part of the route. Here we enter one of the many tunnels through the Cascade Mountains. <laughs> We were in a tunnel. And this is the parlor car in a tunnel. By now the snow was heavy, clinging to the trees, and we were rumbling through a winter's wonderland. Okay, for our rail fans, we're out of a tunnel and coming onto a very high trestle. Then we go into a snow shed. These are built all along this route to protect the tracks from avalanches and snow accumulation. Now we go into a tunnel, see the snow shed receding, and now we're back into another snow shed. And now we're back into another tunnel. And can you believe it? Into another snow shed. And you can see now the exterior view of the snow shed. Southern Pacific put in all this cool engineering back when it opened this route back in the 1920s, the Cascade Route. Descending below snow level, we miss the huge trees that once filled this western Oregon forest. Here we pick up the rain-swollen Willamette River and follow it into Eugene. Eugene through the Willamette Valley to Portland. When you see this tower, you know you're in Portland. And here is a view of a train called the Cascades. There's a lot to see and do in Portland and around Portland along the mighty Columbia River and the Columbia River Gorge. You can see the stunning Willamette Falls and other waterfalls in this area. But we're staying on the Coast Starlight, pulling out of Portland, a typical urban kind of scene along the railroad tracks as we head towards Seattle. We'll be there at nighttime. As its name suggests, Portland is a major shipping port, so it's not surprising to see all these freight cars. Here, we're crossing the Willamette River, from which the fertile Willamette Valley gets its name. It's surprisingly wide up this far north. The Columbia River is wider still. Born in the ice fields of Canada, we cross it into the state of Washington, 
and take one look back toward Oregon. At the Riverport city of Longview, we see wood products and ocean-going ships. From here, we can approach Mount St. Helens, following the Toodle River. At this vantage point, you can clearly see what came from the volcano and clogged the river. The blown-over forest is also evident. A side trip would take you up to the Johnson Visitor Center, and this model that demonstrates all that happened in 1980 when Mount St. Helens erupted. A spectacular multimedia show ends with this dramatic view of Mount St. Helens today. You can walk around and gaze at the reshaped mountain. That May 18th eruption blew the side out of the mountain, reshaping the landscape with a violent force. The devastation was mind-numbing. But nature's gentler side is slowly bringing life back to all that devastation. In fact, the reestablishment of plant and animal life came sooner than most ecologists had predicted. You'd have to get off the train, of course, to see all this, but it would be worth it. Reboarding the next day, you'd have a short ride into Seattle, and that's where the northbound Coast Starlight ends. See you next time on the next rail adventure. I'm John Letts.